All right, man, Georgia Talk. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We in here, baby. Look. All right, so listen, man. Listen, man. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the 8 a.m. show. You know what it is. Look. So, uh, Rory and Maul has something to say about Drake and uh, this whole... The Marta Rosen thing. I wanted to I wanted to speak on this because I thought that it was very interesting the conversation they had on this. Um, I know a lot of people saying, well, there was old oh, people talking about it already, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't care. I'm gonna talk about it. So I wanted to I want y'all to see what they said, and I'm gonna get my commentary on it. Listen, here we go. So look, we're gonna get into it. This is Torch Talk. You know what it is, man. If you like the content, please subscribe. And if you're new here, let me work for your description today, all the beautiful, sexy ladies. I know y'all. Listen, I seen some of y'all, some of y'all beautiful, single, sexy ladies in the chat. Oh, man. Listen, fellas, man, they right there. Just shoot your shot. You know what I'm saying? Who one in the chat? All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, so I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a kind, you know, if you want to leave a, a kind donation, links on the screen right there for me. And if you want to leave it, if you don't, that's cool, too. I'm just glad you're here. Cash at PayPal's in the description. You, they call me a hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000. You know what it is. And, um, and counting. Million by Monday morning. Let me know where you're from, too. So let's get right to it, man. We ain't going to play no games. We're going to get right to this clip. All right, so let's get it. We're going to get to the clip, man. <laughs> How do we want to get into... Uh... Honoring Vince Carter. That's how I looked at this entire debacle. Shout out to Vince Sanity, Air Canada. One of the greatest Vince ever. Vince Carter, one of the most underrated NBA players ever, in my opinion. Um, but I am, you know, old enough to remember when Vince Carter was one of the best players in the league by far. I mean, for, for my era, he definitely was. Yeah, so shout out to Vince. One of the uh, really good dude, too. Vince is one of the most solid, you know. Yeah, Vince was good, man. I'm not even going to sit here in front. Vince Carter definitely was good. I think he was more of a a, a showman than actually a very, very... I know that sounds kind of crazy. He was more of a showman uh, instead of a very, very good, good, good player to me. I think he showed off a lot, which which was dope. Now, I ain't saying that there's something wrong with it, but definitely was... Uh, I believe he... I think he only played with one team, Toronto Raptors, I believe. That the only person, the only team he ever played for. Uh, but yeah, he remind me of uh, Dominique Dawkins and all those dudes who just was good at dunk, like Dominique Wilkins, people that just was crazy with the dunking. And uh, I would have loved to see Vince Carter and, and Dominique Williams uh, actually have a dunk contest. I thought I think that would have been crazy. Uh, so let's keep going. A lot of these athletes have egos. Then the Vince, he, every time you see Vince, he's the same person. It's always love. So to see him being honored by the NBA and being uh, honored by Toronto and have his jersey retired was dope. Do we blame Vince and Drake for ruining the best kept secret on planet Earth, which is the city of Toronto? Ruin it? No. I mean, it was it was it was a gem. It's still a gem. A lot I know, of but like everyone knows it. about the gem now. But people know about it, but a lot of people haven't been to the gym. A lot of people haven't seen it. They haven't actually been to Toronto. They've heard great things about it. I've I never been to Toronto. I had a chance to go, but I never I, I had a chance to go, but I just didn't go. Um, I'm actually going I'm actually planning on going. I'm probably going to end up going maybe uh sometime next year. But uh, I don't really know too much about Toronto. You know what I'm saying? So, let's keep it going. I think that uh, Vince Carter obviously was the was the guy that on a you know and as far as uh, sports, mm. he was probably the most iconic sports figure in Toronto history. Um, and then obviously, what Drake did culturally and just on a music level, he brought a lot of respect and notoriety to, to Toronto. So they're definitely two of the most iconic symbols in Toronto. And it was dope to see them both in the building and to see Drake honoring. Of Vince Carter. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I know. I'm thinking about creating a studio like that. I like their setup. And I want to have guests on this show. 
instead of just having guests on the live portion of it where uh, they call in. I want to have guests on now. I can do it because I have my, my studio is complete and I can do it the way they do it. But I want to get the couches. I want to get it set up instead of sitting on this chair. I don't know why I told you all that. I guess I feel like uh, I'm close enough, uh, close enough to tell you all these things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, but definitely, I'm definitely looking into uh, creating something like that in the future. But yeah, let's keep it going. Ronald wasn't like that well known when Vince was there. I know he was run, running through Scarborough. No, Vince he had a club. The, he, he had a club man. in Toronto. Of course he did. Yeah, he had a club. I think it was called Government or something like that. Just pick out the name out, of the club. Out the I crowd. Up, yeah. Um, during the game, Chubbs and Drake were, were courtside, which, you know, is, isn't a, a new thing. Mm. He's an ambassador of, of the Raptors, goes to a lot of games. Um, obviously Vince getting his, his number retired, right? Yep. His yeah. jersey's retired. Putting up that banner on the Raptors. Big, big moment. Not, not a surprise that Drake was there whatsoever or Chubbs. They just happened to be playing the Kings. So tension was in the air. It wasn't just the Vince Carter night by any means. But why was tension in the air? I, I mean, I guess they're going to get to that. We know why, I'm just saying. But I'm only asking that question. Why was tension in the air? Did it have to be? Because from what I understand, Drake is a fan of basketball. Why are you out there talking about this man? Like, why? But I'm sure I'm sure Maul is gonna t explain to us in an extreme detail of why. I'm sure. So let's listen closely to Maul, because I'm sure he's gonna explain this to us. I'm sure. I'm not gonna say Drake showed up because Demar Rosen was there, but he did stand up for most of the game. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of grilling. If I paid for the seats behind him, I'd be a little upset. <laughs> Like, sit down, Chubbs. For the people that aren't sports fans or aware, DeMar DeRozan was a star on the Toronto Raptors. He's uh, from L.A. He got traded. From to, Compton, specifically. Yeah. He got traded to the Kings. He moved. Now he's playing in Sacramento. But he also. Man, she is fine. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> That's a good looking woman right there, man. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. She is a very nice looking woman. She's very nice looking. But let's keep it going. So you see your boy Drake standing up. Like, what's all this for, dog? Like, what is all this for? Like, why are you standing up with a with a, a a fatigue hoodie, a fatigue jacket on, bro? And your boy next to you as if y'all won't get chipped up together. I don't understand this. Y'all could get lazed up together, chipped up together, both of y'all. Microsoft and Apple chipped up together. It ain't no problem for y'all to get chipped up easily. I don't think I ever seen Drake throw hands. I don't think he even know how to even hold his hands. In fact, no, I take that back. I did see him practicing boxing. So he might be a little, he might be on to something. You know what I'm saying? But I was paying attention to his feet. And just because you practice boxing don't mean that you can actually fight. Because you try to do that one, two, three combinations in the street, the dude just tackle you and slam you on the back of your neck. It's over for you. Like, for real. Star on the Toronto Raptors. He's uh, from L.A. He got traded. From to, Compton, specifically. Yeah. He got traded to the Kings. He moved. Now he's playing in Sacramento. But he also, being from Compton, has a big allegiance to uh, the West Coast. And he was at the uh, pop-up, the Kendrick show, the Ken and Friends one um, on Juneteenth. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to say this, ladies. Why do y'all wear shirts like that? That's too revealing. This is revealing. I don't, I like looking at it, but why are you wearing a shirt like that? Like, this is like, you come into office like this? Like, I, yeah, I just had to say that. I just had, I had to point it out. I'm sorry. I had to point it out. But I know a lot of y'all looking too. Like, I know y'all, y'all probably didn't even pay attention, but y'all paying attention now. <laughs> He was also he was brought in up video. in a song, Not Like Us. Yep. His name in is in video, it. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was in and the music video. He was video also too. in the video, which definitely caused some tension, we can assume, between him and Drake, because him and Drake were... Besties. I don't know if they were friends, per se, but, you know, oh. they... 
They hung out. I, know, I saw a clip of DeRozan saying like when he got they traded. They were friends, man. They were I don't very know. good I, friends. I, I, I don't hang out with Drake. Oh, yeah. I don't know. They was friends. There was a he, clip circulating. Is he friends with Kyle Lowry? Is he friends is with every Drake, Raptor? Them, right. This is what y'all got to understand. There's no such thing as they were friends and nothing happened and then they stopped talking. If you stop talking to somebody, y'all wasn't friends. Let's be clear here. Friends usually communicate when there's something wrong. If you don't communicate with the person, then y'all was never friends. Y'all was just close associates, but y'all were never friends because if there was a friend of mine who had an issue with me, he's going to say something or I'm going to say something to them. That's it. So when you say um, they were friends, you're just giving the grace to Drake because that's your boy. You know what I'm saying? You ain't asking, well, why are they not talking? Because there could be a reason why DeMar DeRozan is it not, is not, is it not? Is not messing with Drake. But Maul is not concerned about that because he's so busy riding on the Drake's back like Drake is a giant and he wants to see the city. That's what he's doing. He's so, he's so busy worrying about siding with Drake that he is not asking the question of well, why isn't DeMar DeRozan messing with Drake? Ever? DeMar has spoken to Drake being a friend. He's spoken to it before. He's been on Club Shay Shay. That, saying yeah. how when he got traded and he was heartbroken, mm -hmm. Drake, you know, he went to Drake's house and, you know, Drake, you know, helped him through that moment, mm -hmm. let him know Toronto will always love him and oh, you that's know, appreciate fake, him. Like, you know, man, get up out of here. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that. I, I I don't believe I think that what he's saying that could have happened, but the way Maul is explaining it, as if this guy went on his knees crawling to Drake and went to Drake's house and he Drake was a therapist and said, Oh, I got you, man. You know, we'll still love you, bro. Don't worry about it. I'm so heartbroken. I had to I have to leave the I have to leave the Raptors. Like, come on, bro. I don't I don't believe that, Maul. You gotta chill, bro. You know what I mean? So it's he, it was he was a friend. He was there for DeMar, when he was fucked up going through that situation. And, you know, so we're not going to act like, oh, were they friends? They, they were friends. Okay. Yeah. That solved that. Yeah. I didn't know. They, they were again, again, you are, like, Maul is so funny to me. Because he always seems as though he has the answer for everything. So everything's so simple. It's like, oh, well, they were friends. I knew they were friends. He was going through something. How do you know that? Because if they were real friends... Then why you? How do you explain them not talking no more? What happened between that? Because friends don't usually do that. They usually friends, friends, real friends. I ain't talking about halfway friends. If any of y'all in the comments have y'all ever had a friend that you could somebody had considered a friend and just stopped talking to you out the blue, or was there a reason for it? You know what I'm saying? Or or because I know a lot of people will say, well, I consider that person a friend. Just because you consider somebody a friend doesn't make them a friend because they might not consider. It has to be a mutual respect between both of y'all. It can't be because you consider somebody a friend and they don't consider you a friend. Because obviously, if Drake considered him a friend and uh, DeMar DeRozan didn't consider Drake a friend, then that's Drake's fault. Because Drake believed that they were friends or vice versa. If, if DeMar DeRozan felt as though Drake was a friend and Drake didn't feel as he was a friend, that's his fault for believing that if he didn't confirm that they were actually friends. And I know people saying, well, how do you confirm that you're friends with somebody? You know, there's, there's different things. And one of the confirmations is not talking to each other and, and going to do something that probably is going to damage your friendship. That's definitely confirmation that y'all wasn't friends. Friends. Um, obviously has a history with Kendrick Lamar. They're also on record doing a lot for the city of Compton. Mm -hmm. Parades, marches, community work. They've been friends. Mm -hmm. Compton is only but fucking 10 miles at most. Right. So definitely have a relationship there. He chose a side, clearly, mm -hmm. because he showed up in a video where Drake was a pedophile. But you see what I mean? How, how everybody framing this as if this is a, a war. It, it, I mean, I don't think that you could say that because there's certain people that still talk to Drake. Do you say that they chose a side? 
Are you saying they chose a side because they talked to Drake or they still hang around Drake? I just think that whenever it comes to the, the other side, Kendrick, everybody always feel like they have to say that that this guy Drake took a side. I mean, they took a side. Anybody that was in the music video, LeBron James, anybody, y'all going after everybody that was in a music video that was at the yeah, there was hundreds, there was a, a hundreds of people at the pop out concert. And y'all are the people who pointing out people saying, Yeah, he was at the pop out, so he ain't friends with Drake either. Look, see, he at the pop out. And that's the one of the reasons why you seen Game Man go to the pop out. Because he didn't want to be labeled as somebody that wasn't friends with Drake. Which is crazy to me. That's crazy. Well, I don't think there would have been tension had he not. Because how could you get mad at, at him just for Kendrick bringing his name, name up in a song? Mm -hmm. like, you can't do anything about that. But, no, it wasn't but that. It it was, was, you were in the video. It was the video, yeah. yeah you you, you look great in the video. You showed support <laughs> in that moment. Like, you showed support in that moment for a record and an energy that was directly disrespecting, you know, a guy that was a friend of yours that made it very comfortable for you during your time in Toronto, made sure the city embraced you, mm. rolled out the red carpet for you, treated you like one of their own. And then the first chance, you know, you got to to show your true colors and how you felt, you know, you chose to, you chose a side. And that's mm. fine. But I just don't understand how people are saying, oh, Drake is corny for this and this, that. It's like, okay, I made it comfortable for you for years. So your first time back, I'm going to make it uncomfortable. I don't know if Drake made it comfortable. You see what I mean? Like, you, Maul, I'm sure, I don't, I think Maul is in his 30s too. And I feel like a lot of times, Maul, because he's cool with Drake or because he says he knows Drake or they, whatever, he condones this childish behavior. And why can't you just call it out and say, nah, bro, I would, I don't, I, I, I'm not condoning that. I understand Drake, I understand you mad, but there's no point for that, bro. You got to let that go. Got to move on from it. I'm going to make it uncomfortable for you. How? Why? Why, do you, why are you making it uncomfortable for some dude? Why? Why are you standing on the sidelines acting like you tough? Why? You're not tough. We all know he ain't tough. Come on, bro. For him, I think he would have been... What? If Drake never existed, I think he would have been okay in the city of Toronto. I'm, I'm not saying he wouldn't have been okay. I'm saying that him, being, him and Drake having a friendship and a mm. relationship while he was in Toronto definitely help De DeMar have a better time okay, yeah. and experience Toronto at a different level. Uh, okay. I'll go with what the internet conspiracies of this entire thing was. He brought Chubbs instead of his son, which I thought was an odd conspiracy because he's brought his son and Chubbs before. Like, it's not really... A, a, <laughs> yeah, that's just people... That do. was kind of a reach. <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's, they brought Chubbs, like, <laughs> to intimidate... No, he didn't, man. A, a very large <laughs> basketball player from the city of Compton. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think DeMar was that intimidated DeMar by anybody. I don't think DeMar was intimidated. A professional um, athlete. <laughs> now, Chubbs and Drake were standing a lot of the game, staring at him directly, even yeah. when Sorry. the ball wasn't even in his hands, and DeMar was not looking at them. And then at the end of the game, somebody who I believe is just, I, I don't know, a, a mouth interpreter, said Drake said, fuck out of here, pussy, or go that way, pussy, after the game. Which, I'm not here to stick up for Drake, is not that crazy for a fan to yell at a player at any oh, sporting event. Oh, you're bugging event. the fuck out, bro. You're right. You're bugging, bro. You're bugging. It's it, bro. Drake is just not a fan of basketball. This is we're talking about one of the biggest artists in the world. Talking about calling a calling a professional athlete a fucking pussy. Like, don't don't sit here and try to pretend or gaslight people into believing that because Drake's a fan that his words don't hold no weight or because there's it's not it's not uh unbelievable that a fan would do that cut it out cut it out I, this is what I'll be talking about about these dudes a lot of these dudes man they don't they just don't want to be honest about it we know for a fact that Drake Drake holds some weight, especially in Toronto. You saying this to this dude, and you and on top of that, you only did that because y'all just admitted, y'all just admitted that Drake, he came, uh, 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 this guy, DeMar DeRozan went to Drake after, after he felt some type of way about him being traded. And now that he comes back to the city to play or whatever, I don't know if, they, if this is first time ever playing, but he comes back to the city and play, now, all of a sudden, Drake gets there, and he basically 
all the stuff that he said to Drake, Drake cut the shits on him and throw it back in his face. And y'all sitting here acting as if like it's okay because fans do that. Like this is crazy. Yeah. Has different circumstances. Fans, fans, fans have yelled worse. I've been to a lot of games and they've yelled. Go to some a crazy game in shit. Boston. Yeah, they've yelled some crazy shit for sure. They yell crazier shit in the podcast crowd. This was no, but this was obviously again. We we know what this is. This there was, was the moment where Drake, because he does the local TSN, the Toronto Sports News broadcast through the in the game, and the guy uh, talking to Drake, the sports commentator, said, "You know, what are your thoughts if the Raptors were to retire Demar's jersey?" And Drake's response to that comment was this. Sure. Yes, if you ever put a, a DeRosa banner up, I'll go up there and pull it down myself. That's the answer to the question. Sure. All right, so, mm -hmm. all right. So, that's not what actually happened. Drake did say that, but he said that out of the, I believe he said that out of the blue. Because I believe that they were talking about Vince Carter's jersey being up, and then Drake came out and said, if you was to ever put that up there, I'd rip it down myself. Is that was is that the question you was gonna ask? So the dude didn't even get a chance to even ask the question, and he interjected his feelings into it. Nobody even said anything about Demar Derozan. You know what I'm saying? And Drake did that. Now I don't know if they're gonna talk about that, but that's actually what happened. That in combination of him calling him a pussy, the mm -hmm. stare downs, the oh no, the I'm not excusing. I'm I'm joking with fan banter. Like we've seen what fan banter can do if Ron Artest is in the building. Like, mm -hmm. this is not that. I'm not going to pretend like Drake and Chubbs were not dead staring at that guy upset, and I wouldn't say trying to intimidate him, but making sure he knew that they were there. A lot of people clown Drake for some tough guy shit in that regard. I don't know if you can really say what someone's intentions were. I think Drake would have been there anyways, but at the same time, Man, yeah. get up out of here. They were staring at him like... You know exactly what Drake's intentions was because he was standing up. The Nick Dustin, bro. He was standing up, bro. He was standing up. He was standing up. He was standing up the whole time in the game. Like this. He's standing. What do you, what do you think he's um, um, going to do, bro? Like, what are we talking about here? The whole time he's standing up. And you're acting as if, like, 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 that's normal. You know what I'm saying? And then he, and on top of that, he said what he said to an, the announcer. Like, come on. And somebody, I don't know if the, the reading lips part was true, but we know what's happening. Come on. What's up, pussy? Why not? But what are you going to do with a basketball game? Why not? What are they supposed to do? Uh, you want uh, some poutine tomorrow? Like, what, what the fuck are they supposed to offer him? Poutine? Like, yeah, he, they're supposed to make it uncomfortable. Ice grill him, say, yell at him. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's supposed to happen. We're going to make it uncomfortable, you, uncomfortable for you during this but game. But that's now. a little different than, like, Man, when Drake was doing that to that's other players. It's crazy for you to say that. What are they supposed to do? Uh, act like gentlemen. Act like men. Maybe have a seat. Maybe you don't worry about it. Maybe um, stand up when there's a, a, a good play going on. But you sitting there, you this dude is funny. I'm telling you, Maul is crazy, man. Maul's crazy. He was the ambassador, and the, the Raptors were in the playoffs, and... Well, yes, it's different now. Now it's like, this is actually real, because we have an issue outside of basketball yes. to rap with you. Yeah, this is different. This issue has nothing to do with basketball. <laughs> yeah. At all. No. Uh, DeMar, so, DeMar so why DeMar not do that somewhere else? Yeah. yeah. Do it where? Oh, I don't know. In but, Target? I mean, if they both happen to stumble no, on I know, each other. No, I know where you at tonight. <laughs> I know where you'll be playing at. I have courtside seats. But what does that do? Like, what what is the end result of that entire nah, thing? Just, it just lets Demar you. Demar did it not feel you, anything. I'm I'm sure it's not about fine. Demar feeling anything. Mm. It's just letting you know I'm not fucking with you. Okay. Man, I think it's, it's more for Drake validating that. that. That's crazy for you to even say. Like, yo, I'm telling you, I never seen nothing like this. This guy Maul, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I never seen nothing like it. He justifies anything that Drake does. Anything he does. Anything Drake does, he justifies it. I, I'm telling you, I've never seen nothing like it. Never seen it. It's crazy. For himself. Yeah, like, I'm not fucking with I, I think you're right, Roy. I don't think DeMar gives a shit at all. He cares. About what? Not, not about his physical being. No, I don't, nobody's okay. gonna... I'm not talking about that, but he don't think that DeMar didn't feel awkward running up the court and every time he probably looked at drake drake was ice grilling him and like that's the first time that's happened to him like they were friends these are they were friends at one point yeah, yeah. this it, he definitely felt that uh, i feel like 
NBA players have felt that with women in the crowd. Other people, I feel like this is a feeling every NBA player has, has had before with someone sitting close to the court that has a personal issue with them. We just didn't know about it. This one just happens to be Drake. I don't think it affected him. And you happen to That's be an all-star right there. He's been through plenty of these situations. It just wasn't Drake. Yeah, exactly. So it's, so just, it's not the same situation. Mm. It's not. I feel like it'd be crazier if you had an ex-girlfriend that was sitting in the family section no. next to your wife that's than it would be Aubrey Graham courtside with Chuck. No, nah, that's nothing. When you make 200 million <laughs> hoes, get along. Shout out James Harden. If you make 200 million, I don't, I don't think Drake being courtside matters that much either. Like what? No, is but it gonna it, stop my paper because Drake no, don't like me? It, no, it's not about stopping. You get into other things. Nobody's paper's being stopped. Mm. Nobody's gonna be physically harmed. It's just letting you know, in case you didn't know. I think he knew. I don't fuck with you. I think that's you, all. I think. Let's get up out of here again. Like I said, this is what he does. He always try to oversimplize, oversimplize oversimpl things when it comes to Drake. I don't know if "simplize" is a word. That's a new word I made up. But he always do that. All, all, all the time. He does this all the time. Got that call sheet. He knew it was time. Yeah. I mean, it's just fun. It's just fun to see it. I like that. Fuck it. DeMar DeRozan was asked after the game um, what he thought about Drake's comments because the reporters told him, and he said uh, he's going to have a long way to climb. Tell him good luck. And then he got up and left. The funny shit is I don't know if DeRozan gets his number retired by Toronto. He's number one in every category with the Raptors. He's 1,000% he going his... to. He put up 33 in this game, by the way. I'm looking at his stats. No, he we was... ain't got to listen. DeMar's one of the best players in the <laughs> he, league. I don't, think, gotta... I don't know if the stare down affected his ability he, to play he, the game. I was looking at the stats. Of course, everyone's scorer. posting everything while it's happening. He leads in almost every category for the Raptors as far as career. DeMar, he's one of the best players in the league. Yeah, he's I'm getting not... his... Because Vince is what? The first one ever, right? For the Raptors? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? How he just says anything. You don't know if he's going to get his, his jersey retired from the Raptors when he leads in all the categories. But again, he wants to side with Drake instead of just being honest about it and saying, nah, he probably is going to get his. I mean, nah, Drake, bro, you can't get up there to take that jersey down. But again, it is what it is. But that's the end of the clip. Yeah, man, this is the stuff I'll be talking about when we just allow these people to just say anything. I'm glad I'm here. I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm so happy that I have this channel because I could speak how I feel, and it is what it is. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you do, you do. I love you anyway, but look, I think that we got to call it out, and people like Maul, they constantly give Drake a pass on certain things, and that's not good. It's not a good thing. We can't constantly let him get, keep getting passes. He has to, we have to show him that we're not going to sit here and allow that to happen. And I know that sounds kind of uh, <laughs> over the top, but still, like, it is what it is. But, hey, man, look, thank y'all for being here with me. Good morning to y'all again. Y'all have yourself a great morning. I'm happy that everybody was here with me. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Have yourself a good day.